guys. Welcome to my new updated offering of fob boards, the solderless fob kit. What will come packaged to you is a fob motherboard with everything that already needs to be soldered, already soldered. It will also come with five magnet mounts with corresponding DH1H1 magnets, one more pair than you'll need in case anything goes wrong with them. One thing to note is that these boards will not come with rumble motors, and you'll need to solder these on back yourself, but it's a very simple soldering job and anyone with that skill set can easily get that done for you. In conjunction with the fob board, you'll basically need all the parts you can take from a full-fledged T3 GameCube controller. If you don't know if your controller is a T3 controller, it's going to be these controllers with white plastic stick boxes. You can also look for the factory dot stamp on the back of the shell where the D-pad is. Any white or smash edition controller is a guaranteed T3 controller, but for the other colored shells, you're going to need to check for this. Other parts that we're going to salvage are that we're going to take the shell, the buttons, the stick caps, and notably the rumble bracket. Alright, firstly, we're going to need to get these magnets mounted on the stick boxes. If you don't already know how to do that, then check out my other video and come back. Install your magnet mounted stick boxes. It's just going to be the four tiny screws that you hopefully haven't lost and just install them right into the board. Now we're going to thread the trigger paddles onto the rumble bracket. Be sure to tuck the wiring into the spaces underneath. Place the rumble bracket back with the two hooks on the top and it should look like this, plush against the board. And after that, it's just a basic reassembly of the controller. Make sure every button is back in, except for the Z button. Make sure every button pad is back in its proper place. Make sure the board fits nicely, and if you did install the rumble motor, even if it's not soldered in, it's just for the weight that it's pointed upwards to ensure the shell closes. You can now install the Z button. You can usually just tuck it in with the prong side first and push down and in to secure the Z button. Ensure that your trigger potentiometers are pointed upwards to hook onto your triggers. This can technically depend on if you use springless triggers, but to avoid confusion, just make sure these align with your trigger hooks, which is usually in the up position. Now, check to make sure your controller can receive power and operate before screwing your whole shell back together. Next, you'll need to perform a first time setup with the fob board, which just requires calibration. I'll go over the basic calibration right now, but be sure to check out the full fob software guide to get the most out of your controller. The first button command we're going to input is AXY start. This command lets us edit settings. Next, we input AXYL to calibrate the left stick. We are going to measure the physical location that the other stick is indicating, and we can input L, R, or A to confirm the location. You'll notice that the left stick isn't moving during this initial calibration, but even if it does, ignore the on-screen left stick movement. These slightly angled locations are for custom notches which we do not have and we skip. Spamming A should quickly exit the calibration. By default, the calibration will set the corners to 70, 70, or 45 degrees exactly. Use AXYR to calibrate the C-Stick, same deal. Ignore any measures for custom notches, and after that, your stick should behave normally. Be sure to either input the safe mode command again, or unplug the controller to save your settings. I hope this new version of my fob board satisfies you and meets a need for an easy and affordable way to obtain great controller performance. The reason why I'm retiring the drop-in boards is because it honestly takes me a long time to source absolutely everything I need to make it into drop-in boards. It was incredibly inefficient, and it basically required me either resort to 3D print farming, or basically salvaging controller for parts. I believe that if you have the ability to open a GameCube controller with a Tri-Wing that you can basically take advantage of these solderless kits, because I'm sure there are magnitudes more people who can use a Tri-Wing versus people who have the ability to solder. I expect these boards to be available regularly. I just recently graduated from university, and I'm pursuing my real big boy job, so this also works for me, because these take way less time to produce, versus pre-builds or even drop-in boards. I'd ask you to subscribe right now, but to be honest, the best way you guys are going to support me is to check out my Etsy and to purchase my products and support my modding business. I'm still planning to make some controller content given it helps my business, and who knows. If it becomes popular enough, I might try to cover everything related to Melee controller modding with this channel. Either way, thanks for watching, and I hope you can enjoy creating your own FOB controllers.